You're tearing up. What are you thinking about? You know, there's all these memories of moments where patients needed more knowledge to be created. Um, and I, I, I remember all those kids. Is there one that you feel like you're still kind of striving for today? You know, I, I wasn't always a big basic science nerd. Job interview. Thank you. Priscilla, you're a Harvard grad who then went to medical school and has worked as a pediatrician. You're also a mother of three and married to one of the most powerful tech CEOs in the world, Mark Zuckerberg. And now you're the co-founder and co-CEO of the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative, which aims to cure, prevent, and manage all diseases by the end of the century. That's me. Did I hear correctly that you wrote the formal letter announcing CZI while in the delivery room? This is true. Um, talk about work-life balance. This is my firstborn, so there was a lot of firsts happening. You know, things are slow until they're fast. And so during the slow parts, we were finishing and writing our letter, and there were a few more edits that needed to be done, and suddenly it was time, it, it was at time for action. And so I was like, Mark, we're done. Like, we will continue working on this, we will iterate on this, but right now we gotta switch switch our attention to something else. When you started CZI, a lot of people in the science world kind of scoffed at the oh lofty goal. It was so funny. Uh, you know, when we started, people were like, that's ridiculous. Please try to say it with a straight face. They were just like, it's not possible. And we we're like, we should try. And we came up with a strategy where our work is about building tools, whether they're software, their models, it's research platforms that make every scientist faster and better. You're now 10 years into the project. Yep. What accomplishment are you most proud of? My brain would say I'm most proud of building the biohubs as places where innovative science that can't be done elsewhere can be done. But my heart leaps every time I get a note from a patient that says that research changed my life. It gave me a diagnosis. It gave me a treatment path. Or at least it gave me a community of others that were on the same journey. Um, that's what I'm here for. How did you know this was your life's mission? I liked the intense moments. I loved being in the emergency room. I loved being in the ICU. And I'm technically excellent. You want me in an emergency, okay? Like that, I'm good for that. I'm calm, I'm, I, I'm, it's clear. I am able to effectively make decisions. Is that innate for you? I, I think so. But I think the thing that is also amazing about, it's like, it's an honor of my lifetime to be able to be there for families in those moments. And um, I'll, I, it, it's just an honor. You're tearing up, what are you thinking about? You know, there's all these memories of moments where patients needed more knowledge to be created. Um, and I, 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 I remember all those kids. Is there one that you feel like you're still kind of striving for today? You know, I, I wasn't always a big basic science nerd, but it was all those times that a family gave me a PDF, a printout of all the research that's known about their kid's illness. And I'm like, this is it. I remember reading word for word, like every single word, trying to extract knowledge out of that PDF to help a family. And people get confused. They, they think like, you know, the work that we do is about medicine because I'm a physician, but it's really about basic science because if we can discover new knowledge about how the human body works, that's hope. I want to take us back to the beginning. Can you paint me a picture of what it was like growing up in your house? I grew up in Massachusetts. I grew up in a Irish Catholic town. We were the first Im immigrant family there, one of the first. We lived in a tiny uh, yellow house surrounded by tulips in the spring. But the thing that stands out the most is it was filled with family and it was filled with food. We lived within a mile of 10 aunts and uncles, nine cousins. My grandparents lived with us. I have two sisters, my grandparents, my parents were the adults in the house. And we were all in each other's business all the time. You were never lonely. When do you remember taking an interest in science? Okay, so I was a huge nerd. So there was not like one day where I was like, God, I love learning. Um, that was always a part of me. But the moment when I realized that it was more than something in the classroom was when I was in high school on the robotics team. We had spent all year building this robot. We were in Orlando, we were at nationals, we were winning, and then we lost. I was heartbroken and others were heartbroken. That's when I realized 
that science is a team sport. In 2003, you began classes at Harvard. Walk me through your first few days there. I was terrified. I'd never been to a place like that. I'd never belonged to a group that sort of had that history. And honestly, it, the work was really hard. It kicked my butt. I remember talking to my mom. I was like, I got to transfer out. I don't belong here. And I like remember put, pulling together the paperwork and then deciding that I was going to stick with it and sort of make it work. How did you decide to stick it out? My mom is... She's pretty hands off. She's not going to sort of weigh in heavily. She was just like, okay, if that's what you think is best. I think it was actually that space to try sort of tipped it for me. And then, you know, the second pivotal moment, which comes a little bit before, is I met Mark waiting in line for the bathroom and that changed my life.